from Hollywood, the Screen Directors Playhouse. <laughs> Director's Playhouse, star Barbara Stanwyck, production Remember the Night, director Mitchell Lyson. The Hollywood Screen Directors present a drama at the feet of justice. The motion picture story, Remember the Night. Starring Barbara Stanwyck in her original role of Lee Leander. In the richly appointed interior of Meyer and Company, Swank Fifth Avenue Jewelers, a lady is examining a bracelet, an expensive bracelet. Poised, well groomed, the lady is as beautiful as only the wearer of such an adornment could be expected to be. Well, yes, the bracelet is attractive, but... But, madam, it's exquisite. What a Christmas present for you. Just look at the size of that diamond. No, no, I don't uh, Here, just let me fasten it on your wrist. But, uh, No, 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 don't take it off. Just wear it for a moment. If you only knew how stunning it looked at you, madam. Yes, but uh, I really think I'd like to see something else, if you don't mind. Perhaps, uh, uh, perhaps that one there, in the case behind you. Whatever madam wishes. However, I assure you, we have nothing any finer than the piece you're now wearing. Uh, this one? On the lower shelf, you mean? I say, is this the bracelet the lady had in my... Madam! Oh, my goodness! Mr. Meyer! That lady with the bracelet! Uh, help! Police! Police! Help! Now, don't hand me that, O'Leary. This girl is guilty, and you know it. Trial would be a farce. Well, she was caught red-handed with that diamond bracelet. Calm, calm, not so loud, Mr. Sergeant. Where's the smooth courtroom technique we heard so much about? Why, a jury might think you're trying to browbeat my client. Oh, rats, if you want to get any kind of a break at all for your client, you'll plead her guilty. Oh, no, we won't, Mr. Prosecutor. Not guilty for this little girl, if you don't mind. Now, be reasonable, Miss... Uh... Leander, Lee Leander. I didn't quite catch your name, Mr. Prosecutor. John Sargent, and will you please stop calling me Mr. Prosecutor? Why, certainly, Mr. Prosecutor. Yeah. Now, John, I realize the D.A. put you on this case because of your uh, particular ability to obtain convictions against women, but this case, case is... Case is open and shut. The only reason I'm even discussing it with you is... Well, frankly, I'm trying to get out of town over the holidays, drive home for Christmas. And I'm giving you this last chance to change your plea. Just before Christmas like this, the judge will probably be pretty lenient. Just I'd before be... Christmas like this, a jury will undoubtedly be a lot more lenient and acquit this innocent girl. A jury would at least have a heart, Mr. Prosecutor. Okay. If it's a trial you want, you'll get it. But remember, O'Leary, this girl is no first offender, and I'm going to convict her. Even if I have to get a continuance until after Christmas when a jury might not be so lenient. You haven't got the grounds. Have a heart, Mr. Prosecutor. Miss Leander... It's the jury that has the heart, remember? Yes, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the state has gone to such great lengths to prove that this innocent young girl seated there at the council table beside the prosecutor who's attempting to convict her did walk out upon Fifth Avenue with a bracelet which was still the property of Meyer and Company. A fact which she freely admits. Your lawyer should have been an actor, Miss Leander. He is. In fact, that jury looks like an acquittal. But, ladies and gentlemen, this admission is no way proof of guilt. For this act was committed while this poor, innocent young girl was under the influence of hypnotism. Did he say hypnotism? Uh-huh, hypnotism. Remember the testimony. The salesman showed her the bracelet, urged her to clasp it around her wrist, begged her to examine it under a more powerful light, and then excused himself. It's an old trick, this tempting of the poor. They call it salesmanship. I call it 
Hypnotism! That's what I've been waiting for, if it please the court. Yes, Mr. Prosecutor. In uh, view of this new factor introduced by the defense, the people request a continuance of this case until after the Christmas holidays in order to obtain the expert opinion of a qualified psychiatrist. But, Your Honor, we object. The case is already summed up. It's practically closed. Objection overruled. Case continued to January 3rd. The defendant is remanded to the custody of the sheriff, subject to the posting of a $5,000 bond. Court adjourned. Oh, no, no. Mr. O'Leary, how can I get a bond? Excuse me, Counselor. Somebody required the services of a bail bondsman. Yes, I do. (laughs) But, uh... Oh, Mr. O'Leary, what'll I do? I haven't any more money. Well, uh, I'll leave you my card, just in case. (laughs) Fat Mike, that's me. No, wait. Miss Leander, don't you think you should have told me before this that you had no money? Well, I was afraid you wouldn't take my case. Oh, please, Mr. O'Leary, don't let them keep me here over Christmas. I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do about it. I'll see you in court on January 3rd. <laughs> Look, lady, it ain't so bad. You get a nice little room and a nice turkey dinner on Christmas. Oh, nice Merry <laughs> Christmas. And the same to you, Mr. Prosecutor. I hope you have a very happy Christmas at home. I'm sorry, Miss Leander, I was Come only... along, miss. All right, all right, matron, I'm coming. Oh, uh, Mike. Yeah, 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 Mr. Sergeant. Can I see you a moment? Uh, sure thing, Mr. Sergeant. <laughs> I was just saying to the little lady that being in the clink ain't really so bad. Count it that free tiny dinner. Never yeah. mind, never mind. Now, look, what do you charge for $5,000 bail from now till January 3rd? Did they pin something on your pal? Hmm? <laughs> no, it isn't for me. It's for the young woman over there. For a friend of yours, Mr. Sergeant. <laughs> uh, nothing. <laughs> uh, consider she's out, pal. Uh, consider she's out. Okay, okay, just a minute. Well, here I am, Mr. Prosecutor. Oh, you. Compliments of Fat Mike. What are you doing here? Well, I don't know yet, but I have a rough idea. Well, glad you're out. Uh, Come on in. (laughs) You know, one of these days, one of you boys is going to start one of these scenes differently, and one of us girls is going to drop dead. Now, look, when court reconvenes, I'm going to try to put you in jail for a good long time. That's my business. But you haven't been convicted yet, so I don't see why you shouldn't enjoy Christmas. That's why I told Mike to get you out. And bring me up here? I did not tell him to bring you up here. You mean I don't have to stay here if I don't want to? You certainly do not. As you can see, I'm all packed and ready to leave on a little trip home for Christmas. And, uh, well, it's quite a drive, and I haven't had my dinner yet, and... You, uh, want me to go? Well, yes. Where? Don't you live someplace? Oh, I had a room in a hotel, but they locked me out this morning. Oh, that doesn't solve any problems, huh? Well, why don't you put me back in the clink? That solves a lot of problems. Yeah, that wasn't the idea. Had your dinner yet? No, not yet. Oh. Well, come on, then. We'll try and figure something out for you, and then I can get on the road. You know, if anybody told me this morning I'd be dancing with you tonight... I told you you were dancing? That's pretty bad, huh? For a district attorney, you're marvelous. <laughs> Holy smoke. What's wrong? Judge Smith, let's get back to our table. The huh? judge that's trying my case? Yeah, with his wife. He's just leaving. Oh, do you think he saw us? I know he did. And it would be just like him to make something out of it. Think I was trying to throw the case. Oh, I wouldn't want to cause any trouble for you. Oh, forget it. Sit down and finish your dinner. You know, I understand that getting a conviction is just part of your job, and I I really don't mind. Mm. It's just too bad it had to be a nice guy like you. I've been doing a little thinking about you, too. You you just don't look like the criminal type, that's all. Thanks. How long have you been swiping things? Always. Did you, um, did you take things you don't need? Sure. Mm. Tell me, in the presence of beautiful things, did you... Did you feel a sudden, irresistible urge to take them in your hands and hurry away with them? Do you mean, was I hypnotized? I mean, maybe maybe you're a kleptomaniac. Oh, no. No, they tried that. 
Now, if you sell them later, you lose your amateur standing. Mm. I don't understand it. Oh, I don't think you ever could understand, because, well, maybe you never had to. Sometimes you do a thing you know is wrong, but I... Oh, I don't know. You wouldn't like to buy me another drink, would you? Okay, but then I've really got to go. A waiter. Yes, sir. Two Johnny Walkers and soda. Have the band play my Indiana home. Yes, sir. Why did you ask them to play that? Because that's where I'm going. Wabash, Indiana. No kidding. A Hoosier? <laughs> oh, no wonder I like you. I'm from Kendallville. You're from Ke... Well, that's only about 50 miles from... Yeah. And we have to come here and meet like this. <laughs> you know, I go home every Christmas. You do, huh? Mm-hmm. How long since you've been back home? I've never been back. I ran away. Oh. Folks still alive? My mother, stepfather. Look, how would you like to go home for Christmas? Indiana? Sure, I'm driving out in my car. I could, I could drop you on the way and pick you up on the way back. How about it? Oh, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. Hey. Hey, wake up. We're here. Hmm? Oh, oh, where are we? Indiana, Kendallville. Oh. Gee, it hasn't changed much. No. They don't change much. Uh, there it is, straight ahead. Uh -huh. The other side of the railroad tracks. Oh, gosh. Maybe I should have let my mother know I was coming. No, don't worry. She'll be glad to see you. Uh, there it is, that house with the fence. Oh. Uh, will you go in with me? Of course I will. Come on. I, uh, I'll pick you up on New Year's Day in the afternoon, huh? Oh, you've been very sweet. <laughs> well, go ahead. Ring it. Oh, maybe she doesn't even live here anymore. Don't be scared. Someone's coming. Yes? Hello, Mama. Don't you even know me? Yes, I know you. What do you want? Oh, I don't want anything, Mama. It, it was just Christmas, and uh, Mr. Sergeant happened to be driving out here. And... My home is in Wabash, and I knew how glad you'd be to see you. So you're you. not in jail, like the paper said. What do you mean, Mama? You know what I mean. The whole town knows about it. You haven't changed none since you went away. Still stealing things. Same as you stole the money I'd saved for the missionary. I didn't steal it. I told you a thousand times I only borrowed it to get a dress and I'd pay you back. But you didn't pay me back, did you? You never paid anybody back, except in disgrace. Oh, that's the neighbors could read about you in the papers. I'd forgotten how much you hated me. Ever since I was little, you were always so right and I was always so wrong. You were always so good... I was always so bad. You'd better go. There's no place for you here. Don't worry, I'll go. Please, John. Please take me away from here. Anywhere. But please don't let me stay here. Not here. <laughs> You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse production of Remember the Night, starring Barbara Stanwyck in her original role with Gerald Moore as John Sargent. To the brilliant young prosecutor, John Sargent, the difference between right and wrong had always been clearly defined. But now he was no longer so sure. Somehow his theories had backfired. Quite a homecoming, wasn't it? I'm sorry you had to see it the way it was. No, I... I'm glad, really. Answered a lot of my questions about you. You can drop me in the next town. I'll, 
I'll get a room somewhere and you can pick me up on your way back to New York. Now, I know just the spot for you. Any place but Kendallville. Out at my farm. Mom and Aunt Emma have exactly the room for you. There's only one window and uh, <laughs> the mattress is stuffed with rocks. <laughs> you mean you're, you're taking me home with you? Sure, why not? But your mother, what will she think? What if it's Forget the same... It. This time it's my home. And you're my guest. Emmy, Emmy, look out the window. Johnny's home. Oh, and there's a girl getting out of the car with him. You don't think that... Of course not. He'd have written you if it was anything like that. Oh, well, it wouldn't matter. Hurry, Emmy, open the door. Oh, Johnny! Mom! Oh, Johnny, my boy. Hello, Aunt Emma. Oh, John Sergeant, I do declare I'm glad you're here. Mom, Aunt Emma, this is Miss Lee Leander. Oh, how do you She's come to spend Christmas with us. I hope I won't be too much trouble. Why, bless you, child, it's a joy to have you. Come along, dear, and take off your things. Thank you, I would like to freshen up. Oh, you must be freezing to death. And here we are, cackling like a couple of old heads. Mom. Yes, dear. I don't like to bring somebody under your roof without, well, without you knowing exactly who she is. I think I can guess. No, no, Mom. This girl, she isn't even a friend of mine. Well, I think she's charming. This girl's a thief, Mom. But she had no place to go for Christmas. Why, the poor lamb. I'm going to put her in jail. You'll do no such thing, John Sargent. That girl looks as honest as all outdoors. If she did take anything, I'm sure it was entirely by mistake. No, I'm afraid this isn't even her first offense. The poor thing. While she's here, we've got to do everything we can to make her happy and comfortable. Feel like a member of the family. Oh, thanks, Mom. Uh, I'm glad you brought her, son. It'll make our Christmas a much happier one tomorrow. There you are, John. This last present on the tree is for you from your Aunt Emma. Oh, thanks, Aunt Emma. <laughs> well, not so fancy, Johnny, but they'll keep your feet warm. Oh, they're beautiful. <laughs> oh, gosh, Lee, I'm sorry about the no present situation for you. John Sargent, what do you mean? You know Santa Claus never forgets anyone. Yeah, but I... Oh, uh... Go on, stupid. They're under your chair. What? Give them to her. Oh. Well, <laughs> what do you know? Uh, Merry Christmas, Lee. Oh, oh you shouldn't have. Here. Uh, oh, from Mom. But you shouldn't Why, have. it's nothing at all. And uh, from Aunt Emma. Oh, oh. knit it myself. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Who's this one from? You, you big dunce. Oh. Can't you remember anything? Oh. Oh, perfume. Hey, isn't that the bottle of taboo I got you for Christmas last year, Mom? John Sargent. Oh, yeah. You're all much too kind. I've never met anyone so thoughtful and oh, so... Oh, nonsense, Lydia. We're just so happy to have you. It's going to be a wonderful week. Different from what you get in the city. Uh, parties and bobbing for apples and sleigh rides. And don't you forget the barn dance on New Year's oh, Eve. Oh, it sounds more wonderful than anything that's ever happened to me in my whole life. Stay still. Oh, go on, go on, duck for oh, it. I've, I've got it, I've got it. <laughs> now what do I do? Eat it. <laughs> oh, John, I'd forgotten how much fun it was to ride in the snow. Enjoying yourself? Oh, so much. I hate to think about going back tomorrow. Well, don't think about it. Anyway, that's tomorrow. And huh? we've still got the bond dance tonight. <laughs> Happy New Year, Lee. Happy New... Oh, Happy New Year. Oh, oh. Let's, get, let's get in the house. Oh, it's warm. Oh, oh, it was such a wonderful dance. Yes, you don't have to go to the city to have fun, you see. Oh, this whole week has been so perfect. Everything about it. Well, children, uh, 
You've got to get an early start in the morning. So we'd better get upstairs and get some sleep. Oh, yes. Well, good night, all. Good night. I think I'll stay here by the fire for a while. Uh, care for a cigarette, Lee? Well, No, I... John. Uh, Lee's still got to pack. Good night, son. Good night, John. Night, Lee. Night, Mom. See you in the morning. Uh, be a nice ride back to New York. Yes. John, say what? Route he's taking. I think we're going by way of Canada. Oh, good. Niagara Falls. Oh, that's lovely. There. <laughs> you don't really have to help me pack, Mrs. Sargent. I have so few things. I know. I wanted to talk to you. Oh. First, I want you to know how glad we are to have had you here. And then... I want you to know how sorry I am that you're in trouble. I didn't know you knew about that. Believe me, I wouldn't have mentioned it to you now, except... Well, John has worked so hard for everything to get where he is today. Well, and... with folks like you to love him, how could he miss? Thank you, my dear. But don't you see, now nothing should be allowed to spoil it for him. I don't see why anything should spoil it for him. Do you? He's in love with you. But he isn't in love with me. He's no fool. But you love him, don't you? I'm afraid so. But I wouldn't do anything to hurt him, or you, or Aunt Emma. You've all been so good. Good night, my dear. And don't worry. Sometimes when you make a mistake... You have to pay for it. Otherwise, you never learn. Gee, I hated to leave your mother's. Yeah. You know something? What? You're in Canada now. Niagara Falls, Canada. What about it? If uh, you didn't want to go back to New York, I couldn't make you. Did you hear what I said? I heard you. Funny, of all the people in that courtroom, you were the only one who had a heart. Don't kid yourself. When I saw that Christmas spirit jury was going to acquit you, I... I got your case held over, didn't I? That was your job. But you were so gentle with me when I was on the witness stand. That was my job, too. Surest way to lose a case is to browbeat a woman in front of a jury. Oh, you couldn't be tough if you wanted to. You know I love you, don't you? Don't say that. Why shouldn't I say it? Because some chiseling salesman claims you swipe one of his bracelets? I did swipe it. He got it back, didn't he? Anyway, what you did yesterday and what you do today are two different things. Oh, don't be a sucker, Johnny. You don't know me at all. You love me. You've worked too hard to get where you are. You can't throw it all Come away here. at... I love you. Oh, Johnny, please. Okay. We'll go back. But you know what I wish? What? I wish it was tomorrow and the case was over. And you were acquitted. Knockwood. And we'd march right into the judge's chambers and... Ever marry us. Oh, you know you're talking like a four-year-old, don't you? And you know where we're going on a honeymoon? Where, silly? Niagara Falls. But we're there now, darling. case of the people versus Lee Leander, you may resume. Now, Miss Leander, you heard the state psychiatrist define the condition known as hypnoleptic catalepsis? Yes. Louder, please. Yes. You say that at the time you left that jewelry store, you were hypnotized. Do you? Well... Do you or don't you? Well, my lawyer said so. Did he tell you to say so? Object, Your Honor. The question is entirely improper. Sustained. Disregard the question. What he's getting too tough Proceed with the case. Miss Leander, 
Were you hypnotized or weren't you? Well, I, I suppose... I didn't ask what you supposed. I, I mean, I guess... Make up I, your mind. I, do you guess, do you suppose, or do you know? I object, Your Honor. The prosecutor is deliberately trying to confuse my client. Sustained. He don't have to yell at her. Miss Leander, did you hear the psychiatrist's opinion about hypnotism? I, uh, uh, what's that? Will you answer my question and not keep us here all day? I, I didn't Don't hear. try to evade. The surest We're way to lose a case is to browbeat a woman in front of a jury. No, no, John, you mustn't. Were you or were you not hypnotized? Did you or did you not steal that bracelet? Please, Your Honor. Kindly address your answers to me over here. Please, Your Honor. I want to plead guilty. Please, you can't do that. Your Honor, I don't think this woman is well. I, be I believe a five-minute recess. I want to plead guilty. Order in the court. Order. Why do you wish to plead guilty, my dear? Because I am guilty. And when you've made a mistake, you've got to pay for it. Otherwise, you never learn. Lee. Lee, why did you do it? Don't feel badly, John. It was for the jury to decide whether you were guilty or not. You know I am. But this way there's no appeal, no retrial, nothing but jail. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's best this way. Do you think I'll stop loving you just because they lock you up? Don't you see, Johnny? If you still wanted me afterwards, <laughs> you'd be a sucker if you did, but I'd be all square. And you would have had time to think about a lot of things. The only thing I'll be thinking about is you. Will you... Will you stand beside me and hold my hand when they sentence me? Of course, darling. Then I won't be afraid. And the other part won't be so bad or so long. Lee. Oh, John. John, I love you so much. Barbara Stanwyck will return in just a moment. Next week, as always, Screen Directors Playhouse brings you another outstanding motion picture drama with its original star. Our story is an unusual experiment in emotion, The Uninvited. And recreating his original role will be Ray Milland with Screen Director Lewis Allen. Now, here again is tonight's star, Barbara Stanwyck. Thank you. I think I just served the shortest prison term on record. <laughs> but you see, I, I had to be released in time to introduce you to my director. When I look back on Remember the Night, I remember a lot of wonderful days working with a director who's brought you such grand films as Hold Back the Dawn, To Each His Own, and Kitty. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet Mitchell Lyson. Thanks, Barbara. Those are pretty nice words from a gal who just finished putting up with me for another picture. Mitch, working in the lie with a director like you was one of the nicest things that ever happened to me. But you know, you've changed since we made Remember the Night together. I have? Uh-huh. Remember the time the cast was so upset because you kept us late? But I explained, Barbara, my watch had stopped. And the next day you came to the studio with an alarm clock hanging from your lapel. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of silly. Imagine wearing an alarm clock. <laughs> and now, Mitch, you've outgrown wearing alarm clocks. Oh, sure. Mitch! <laughs> you know, Barbara, I never did find time to get that wristwatch fixed. <laughs> but the alarm clock! Well, that means it's time for this director to say good night. <laughs> good night, Mitch. Good night, everyone. Good night. Well, good night to you, Barbara Stanwyck and Mitchell Lyson. Remember next week, Ray Milland and screen director Lewis Allen. <laughs> Remember the Night was presented through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, whose current release is the William Wyler production, The Heiress, starring Olivia de Havilland, Montgomery Clift, and Sir Ralph Richardson. Barbara Stanwyck will soon be seen in Thelma Jordan, a Hal Wallace production for Paramount. Mitchell Lyson's latest production is Song of Surrender, starring Wanda Hendricks, McDonald Carey, and Claude Rains. Remember the Night was adapted for radio by Warren Lewis, and original music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. Screen Director's Playhouse is produced by Howard Wiley, with dramatic direction by Bill Kern. 
Now, stay tuned for a Halloween hoedown, The Ethel Merman Show on NBC.